Hi folks. Um, the last video was me having this horse come to me when I raised my hand. And uh, it's just a parlor trick, but it's a, there's a real reason behind it. It's not just a game. And it's all part of the things that I'm going to build up on in the next few videos. And uh, what we're doing today is part two of getting a horse to pick you up off the fence really well. And uh, the first thing he's got to do is yield laterally. Yesterday I had him back and straight up. So when I raise my hand and give him direction with my left hand, he needs to move. And I'm going to set this up here because I'm, I'm helping him right now. I'm teaching him. Now you know that I've been working this horse off and on ever since he was still on his mother. So it's not like he's a cold off the range. And uh, what I do want you to understand today is that this is about the feel when I get done. And the feel simply means that when you ask, the horse knows what you want. And uh, for the folks that are still think they need a stick to teach a horse to do something, I, I, I hope this shows you that you don't really need that stick. That was a, a marketing ploy for people in a hurry. And uh, it seems like if they're the right color, you could sell it to a blind man. He wouldn't know the color anyway. But um, anyway, you don't need a stick to do this. So what I'm doing is standing away from the fence so I can show the horse direction and impulsion. The hindquarter needs to disengage, so I'm throwing my lead rope at the hindquarter to speed it up. Now I'm asking the horse to move over. Now I release, and he'll drop his skull. And then, then now we're in the learning mode. So now I say I need you to go the other way. Now if you'll notice, he wanted to come in because he was thinking of yesterday. And he's kind of sorting out between the two what we're doing. And I don't want him to come in. I'm not going to slap my leg and raise my hand. This is not that lesson. This is a lesson of, of working laterally. Now I've got this distance. So now I'll just put this tail of the rope busy. Give him direction with my left hand. And if he can't make it, then I'm going to just shorten up. And let him know that's what it means. It's very simple. And here's the part about horses. He gets to choose now. Do I want to move over or do I want to get mad? I'll breathe. Let him know there's nothing to worry about. Relax. His ear moved. His mind has changed. Now my right hand is going to give direction, my left hand is going to be impulsion. And if you work with me, this is no different than the hackamore. Pick up on the hackamore, give direction, leg comes in for impulsion. This is riding a hackamore horse. I need you to keep going. Here it comes. Keep going. This is why I didn't go to the corner yet. You need to keep going. He knows what to do now. So now I'll just test it. And remember, when you're doing this, teaching something to a horse, and if they, if they get it and then they don't get it, if you're presenting it right, it ain't on you. It's on them. Don't worry about it. Don't feel bad like you failed. Just start over. You only got to do it 1,100 to 1,500 times and they got it. Now he knows where to be. And this is the, this is the colt part. And this is nothing personal. It's just what he believes he has to do. There's his rebellion with his skull. But his feet are moving so I don't care. This is the conversation part. I'm staying just this much bigger than this colt up here and with my with my body. 
Now, you need to leave. I'm not going to put my leg on you if I don't have to. Here comes my leg. There's my hand. Now, don't come in. No, don't, don't, don't start thinking. I haven't asked for anything, so don't do anything. Now, I've given the horse another distance of rope. So now I'm going to ask again with my hand. He knows where to go. My hand stays below my belt. There's your direction, horse. Stay with it. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Thank you so much. Now, stay there. So I'm going to go into position now, which is this. As you can tell, I'm at the point of the curve here. And I can just relax. Now I can say I need you to leave. Now if you picture behind me is the panel. And then someday I'll be standing up on that panel and he's going to come over and get me. So since I changed position with my body, I had to reiterate with my tail of my rope what I needed. And what I'm working on, please get this point. It ain't about the feet and all that stuff. It's about the release. When he makes it, I don't pay any attention to him. I've released right now. So now he gets to understand that he made it. So when I send him the other way, his right side is going to figure out I need to go all the way over there to the fence and he'll release. Once again, it's about release. Direction, impulsion. Yes, I mean it. Still. Here it comes. You need to go all the way over. Right ear keeps swinging to the right. There's the rebellion side. There's the hindquarter. Here's when it falls apart, okay? There. So now I get to release. Practice your breathing. Separate yourself. And if you'll notice, you don't have to go through all kinds of gymnastics. That's one reason I put my foot on the fence. It's to keep the human from running around acting like an idiot. Just stand there. Now you give direction and impulsion. And the horse leaves. Okay? If the horse doesn't leave, you're not a failure. You just haven't done it enough times to where the horse says, Okay, got it. I'll go look for the release. Hindquarter, bam, release. Now, remember folks, I've been working this colt since he was born. Once every three months, once every three weeks, once every whenever I feel like it or I can get to it. So, you know, you can say, well, yeah, if I had that horse, well, okay, this ain't your horse, it's my horse. So take your horse and break it down to whatever you need to break it down to. And the object, just like yesterday's exercise, I want him to do it without any resentment. Now, this bobbing of the head thing that a colt does, that's what colts do. But it's not like he's reaching up and pawing me on the face. What he is doing is just doing what colts do. So he's into pressure. If I have to, I'll go all the way over there and hit him with this popper. I'm offering it. Here it comes, horse. Here it comes. They don't care much for that part. So now I'll go back where I was. You need to leave. Now you can't blame a horse for contesting you. You can blame yourself if you don't do anything about it. I'm not in the corner anymore. Okay, now that's over. And what I want you to notice is when he went over that way, he was walking pretty fast. So he intentionally was going. Now, I want to offer as little as I possibly can to get this done. I need you to leave and go over there.
all the way. Here it comes. Here it it's still busy. See, I'm still I'm still wound up until the right direction pulls in. And you folks can appreciate by watching the front and hind feet. Think about all the possibilities I've got going on there. I've said it a thousand times. If you don't have patience, get a cat. If you don't know how to breathe, you're going to, you know, look real cool purple. That's intentional walking right there. Hindquarter, bam. This horse has made it going that direction. Now I need it to make it going the other direction. Here it comes. Don't weaken. Hind quarter, hind quarter. Now, I'm finished with that part, so I'm going to do something that's a go to. Watch. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You're fine. This is how horses think. You can move over there. Well, okay. There you go. That's a lesson for the day. Now this wasn't pre-arranged, pre-done or nothing. I was just cold hard facts of showing him how to do what I wanted. What I don't want is for this horse to learn something and then be afraid or resentful. So I've got two things now going on for me. So next we'll keep moving on with this groundwork. And uh, my friends in Montana, this is where you're headed. You've got really, really good horses, so you're on your way. And from a partner Jeff in Ventura, break it down. Do the first video I did, because if you can get a horse to back up, you can teach them about anything. So I just did it sitting in a chair. Then you move on to this. You got to break it down. If you got a horse old enough to vote and you're trying to teach it how to do this, it'd be like teaching me how to run a computer. So you really better break it down a lot. So good luck, use your head and stay calm. Adios.